Dad, it finally came. This is a really proud moment. Oh my well. gosh. I've been waiting for this day. Yeah. Now we can fix the planter. Yeah, sweet. Thanks for bringing that wheel down to us. Thanks, Darren. <laughs> nah, folks. Don't get too excited. That's leaving the yard. Just a fell on his way through. Thought he'd stop and say hi and just so happened to be pulling $500,000 worth of machinery on the back. I hate them things. So silage season is here and first step is get these duels clamped onto the tractor, our loader tractor, because we run out of traction when we're pushing silage and wet corn. So that's what we're going to be doing here and then shortly the silage cutter is going to show up. We'll start chopping and packing and pushing. And it's dad's favorite job. These are bolt on duels, and so if we come to the other side, we'll see how it works. See, we took these bolts out and put an eyelet on there on every other one, and so then these bolt on duels come with a long rod that's got a hook on one end and thread on the other. So you just bolt them right on, and so we got to tighten down. Hey, but when we bought these, Cole, a lot of people commented that on some video, uh, the guy broke an axle off using these clamp-on style. Uh -huh. And all I can say about that is, growing up, we never had anything but these clamp-on duels for years and years and years, and I've never broken axle on. Now, I ain't saying it won't happen, but I've run a lot of them. This isn't our first time with this kind of duel and never had an issue with them. We're ready to use the tool that I fashioned up. It's a deep well 15 sixteenths, I think. No, it's inch and an eighth. Inch and an eighth. Yes. Ru -ta 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 -ta. Occasionally they'll fall out of place when you do that and then they aren't hooked completely. So. When I was in college, I knew somebody with bolt-ons. Hmm. Well, we've had them our whole lives on the farm. I see. Until, you know, when we went to 30-inch rows and we obviously didn't use them anymore, but that's all we ever had for duels. Put them on in the spring, take them off in the fall. Mm-hmm. Yep. I really think that's going to be the bee's knees when we're pushing and packing. Especially in that corn, if you remember last year, even when we just get half done, I'm having a hard time getting up that pit, climbing it while pushing corn. And then when we rip an axle off, it'll make some good video. I'm sure glad I didn't get uh, turned in for shoplifting yesterday. Why is that? Well, I was leaving the plat sale barn and Sometimes down there there's a box of apples and you can grab an apple on the way out and I was walking out and there was some peaches and pears in boxes there and I thought, oh, those peaches look pretty good. So I grabbed one on the way out and as I was walking out the door, this lady behind me said, those are not for free, sir. I turned around and she was sitting on the bench with her five kids. I didn't know she was selling them there and I apologized. I said, how much are they? And she said, two dollars. And I pulled out my billfold and I had a five and a one and and uh, she said something about I probably can find some change I said no that's okay keep it and I took three peaches and left so I apologize ma'am so but, you're a thief is what you're saying well no I don't want to be but I almost was did you bring was one of those peaches for me or? so the three peaches I bought then I met Leroy out in the parking lot and he it was 2 30 he said he hadn't had lunch yet so he sat there I had vet supplies for him. He ate one peach. And then when I got to store, Colleen ran it yesterday. 
I said, would you like a peach? And she said, yes, I would. So there's one peach left in the house, and I guess you can have it if you want. Sounds like a deal. All right, the time has come. Our silage cutters had a little issue. They had a couple breakdowns. Only took a few hours to fix, so it's only 12 days later. Let's finally get going. The Silas Chopper is on the way. I'm gonna meet him down on the road so he can follow me to the field. So back here, what dad's been doing, we had a little bit left over. He's been taking it and putting it outside the pit. That way we have something to feed for a while. See, once you cut silage, you wanna let it sit there for a few weeks. Now we'll put the blade on and we'll be ready to rock. So that'll last us a good couple weeks. And then the rest of it, he just kind of moved around. So it'll be in the bottom and you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're making a soup and you look in the refrigerator, you got some leftover vegetables, maybe some leftover ham, you cut everything up and you put it back in the soup. And now you got some fancier soup. So that's kind of like what we're doing with the old silage, except it's, just some old silage. There we are. The fancy plant pot holder. You're so good at growing things. You're a master farmer. This year's crop, velvety. And you can just see the edge of that blade on the outside of the duel, which is ideal. Kind of helps you keep in mind those duels behind you are a little wider and so you don't run into the wall or anything like that. Plus you can pack well. First load is coming down the road. Now we're going to have to see if it's dry or wet. It's not going to be wet. If, if anything, it's going to be too dry. And so we're really worried about that. We're cutting where we're cutting because it's the driest and it's got the least amount of corn on the ear. And so, we, you know, we can still get $7 a bushel which is really high. We don't want to chop a bunch of expensive corn, but we're also low on feed, so we need to chop some corn. That's like my buddy from college's salads. He didn't put any ranch dressing on it. It's kind of dry. A little on the dry side. Yep. So the problem with dry silage is it doesn't pack as well and you really got to get it packed tight so oxygen can't get in there so it can ferment not go bad so the best thing to do on dry silage is just keep driving on it and driving on it and it does pack eventually it just takes longer so i got to get packing <laughs> that's all i got to say about that that's all i got to say about that. not only that we do have the sorghum silage which is green as can be we'll put that on top and it'll soak in but also that's why i have our four-wheel drive tractor out so we can really pound it into a pulp, get it real nice and packed. Sounds good. Awesome. Dad, how much did it cost to build this bunker? I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. I want to say it was about 42,000 mm. if I had to guess. That ain't bad. <laughs> it's probably 80 now. Back in my day, 42000 could buy you an island in the Caribbean. You know that how much the Louisiana Purchase cost? Uh, it was like $10 million. Do you know how much the Louisiana Purchase was? I can't remember if it was $13 million or what it was. Now you buy a quarter in Iowa and that's all you get with that money. I see you got a Band-Aid on your finger. What'd you do there? I tested that red brand barbed wire. It's pointy? Yeah, it's pokey and it goes all the way to the bone <laughs> if you want it to. We were working on some vents today and Dad painted about his whole hand red for a little bit there. And my pliers. Oh.
They got about 16 rows done. We're planning on doing 48 or so. Wow, this is dry. I'm, that's just, that's really, really dry. Wish we would have been able to do it a week ago, but these, this crew has been fighting breakdowns like crazy and they had a tough time, but they're up and going. They were working on the chopper all day yesterday, but got to work it now. Right here is why we're chopping this field versus another field. We'd rather put 70 to 80 bushel corn in the pit versus 100 to 120. 18.3 percent. That's three percent away from being ready to be put in a grain bin. Just got too dang hot and dry outside. Here's a water and some our Wyoming life beef sticks. Ah, honey flavored. Thank you. You're welcome. Did I tell you what the song of the day was yet? No. We're going with Bachman Turner Overdrive today. You ain't seen nothing yet. Beef, it's what's for snack. Can I have that for a while? Sure. I might think of something. But right now I'm eating my beef sticks. It's got a little fluff to it, don't it? It is packing decently, which kind of surprises me. I've had silage pack worse than this stuff, but well, that's odd. But you know, droughted corn a lot of times can look worse than it is. We were out there in the field last night and we were peeling away that brown outer leaf around the stalk, even. And right underneath it, the next leaf is green, so that's a good thing. But there isn't much green coming in the pit. When I get that sorghum on top, I think I'll be pretty happy with it. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about South Dakota State Fair. We, uh, <clears throat> Tammy and I, usually try to make it on Sunday and go to the evening show. That was fantastic. Uh, the band Perry, Lady Annabellum, or Lady A, was supposed to, but they canceled their tour. Of course, I like the camaraderie between the two brothers and the sister in the band, too, and that's kind of neat. And, what a success story for them to make it big, all three of them together. So Tammy and I were talking when we were sitting up in the crowd about how many people had stopped and talked to us about our YouTube channel and the nice things they said. But one stuck out in particular, and when I was walking up there, I kind of locked, locked eyes with a fella that was sitting a few rows below me, and he didn't say anything. And as we were leaving, he stopped me. And he told me that uh, he thanked me for making things better for him when he was taking cancer treatments. And he said it nicer than I did. I mean, he really, it, it kind of took my breath away how making a difference in somebody's life like that, I was, I was blown away. And I started walking down the steps and I got to the bottom of the steps and he was behind me and I had to turn around and thank him again for what for what that meant to me. 
you know, I might have helped him a little bit, boy, he sure gave me a boost that day too. So thank you for that. And beautiful day at the fair. You know, I got up to like, uh, I think 84. There's a little breeze. A couple other friends are always up there when I go and Jerry and Brad and spend some time with them. My good friend Brad Verink was in the South Dakota State Auctioneering Championship. This year he got first runner up, so he got second out of all the contestants. Of course, I thought he was number one, but the guy that won did a fine job too. And so that was fun. I did buy something at the auction. It was a print. It's kind of a nice picture. After I bought it, my wife said, where are we gonna put that now? But I don't know. I get caught up in auctions. So that's all I got to say about that. Well, what do you say we start packing a little bit? Sure, why not? <laughs> What do you think about these duels that we put on? I don't want to do it without them again. Seems like you got a lot more traction. Yep, I got a lot more traction. I can pack twice as fast with it. And when I do pack, it doesn't boil out as much because of a single wheel, you know. And I can I can push up the loads in two pushes instead of four or five. Now. <laughs> There's a gnat in my eyeball. Here comes the last truck of the day. That could use a few gallons of water. We'll get that packed real nice one last time. And tomorrow we're gonna start working on Jeff's pit. We're gonna do the end rows on actually that field of corn right there. Not there, but there. We got the corn chopped that we wanted to for this pit tomorrow. We're gonna start on the corn over there, haul it to Jeff's place, pack that, and then of course we got the sorghum to pile on top of it after that. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Ellie, I'll give you a million dollars if you don't go through this door. <laughs> She's just not into materialistic things, I guess.